Today, we're going to Italy. We're doing everything seriously made from scratch, including vegan pasta bianca or eggless white noodles. We're making homemade marinara sauce and some meatless meatballs. As you guys know, we are now busy, busy parents and date night happens less and less. So we are learning how to make restaurant style food here at home and today it's all Italian. We're also gonna be sharing a relationship Q&A about how Dusty and I met, how we're getting along as parents of two, and so on and so forth. So on tonight's date night dinner menu is a classic spaghetti with meatless balls and all the fixins. So we're gonna make all of these components from scratch including the noodles, the pasta sauce, the meatless lentil balls, and a very simple vegan parmesan. What was I thinking? Just kidding. So I'm doing today something I've always wanted to do and that is make my own pasta. I feel Italian at heart. People speak Italian to me. They ask me if I'm from Italy and when Aaron and I have traveled there in the past, people say I fit right in and that's how I feel in my heart. I would love to actually be Italian or to actually be from Italy. In the meantime, I'm doing my best to at least prepare food like an Italian and today I'm making handmade pasta and it's been so much fun. Aaron and I originally fell in love with Italy on our honeymoon. We have since returned at least once. You guys have maybe actually seen some of those videos on our channel. So whenever we pop on a show or a movie, we're like usually looking for something with an Italian vibe. In fact, if you guys have seen Master of None on Netflix, Aziz Ansari in season two is in Italy and he's a pasta maker. So again, something I've been wanting to do for a super long time. I did it today, so excited to share it with you guys. So this process was actually much easier than I thought it was gonna be. It's only three ingredients. So today I used an organic wheat semolina flour with a little sea salt and water. That is a pasta bianca, which is a white pasta, which means it's egg free, therefore vegan. So for these noodles, I used two cups of flour and one cup of water and then just a few pinches of sea salt. I will say that you wanna make sure and use warm water and start with less. So add a little bit of water and then start kneading. Add a little bit more and so on. Also, you will definitely wanna have some flour on hand for when you start rolling this pasta and then sending it through the cutter because the more you roll it, the stickier it gets. So again, put a little flour on, Fold it, knead it, a little more flour, send it through the roller, send it through the cutter, and so on. Because these aren't cooked from dry, they are actually fresh noodles. I think it really only took about seven minutes for them to boil. And again, they're surprisingly not sticky at all, and they're super durable. Like, they're not falling apart or coming apart at all. My favorite part is that they're really, really thick. Mmm. Good and chewy? Mm-hmm. So excited to share it with you guys. And again, thanks to Antry for sponsoring this video and sending us this amazing pasta roller and cutter, three in one tool so you can actually make fettuccine and spaghetti. This thing is super easy. It plugs right into your electric mixer. It takes all the stress out of having to roll your dough out. Again, you send it through the roller, which is right here in the middle, just a couple times, and voila, you have your noodles. Today we're doing spaghetti, but I actually did cut some fettuccine and they came out super super thick and super tasty looking. This is a super fun and delicious process. We hope you guys enjoy. So for your meatless lentil meatballs, you're going to need one and a half cups of cooked green lentils, about a half yellow onion diced, two to three garlic cloves minced, one tablespoon of tomato paste, one and a half tablespoons of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon of dried parsley, or you could do a quarter cup of fresh parsley if you have it on hand, three tablespoons of flour of your choice, I used chickpea flour, three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, one flax egg, which is one tablespoon of ground flax with three tablespoons of water. You mix that and let it set. So you're also gonna want salt and pepper to taste. We're gonna saute our onion and garlic and then we're gonna throw everything in the food processor. You'll wanna make sure not to overly process your meatballs. You want them to be kind of a dough-like consistency and you want them to be moldable. So if you're finding that they're too wet or moist, then you can always 
add a little bit more of your flour as you go, or if they're too dry and they're not sticking together, just try wetting your hands to kind of reshape them and clump them together. It already smells so good. I seriously just want to eat it as is. So the consistency is a little more wet than I would like it to be, and I'm just gonna add a little bit more chickpea flour with my hands and kind of mash it together until it feels right. You want it to be moldable, but you don't want it to go flat like a cookie when you put it on your baking sheet. I preheated the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna pop these in for about 10 minutes, maybe roll them or flip them part way through and go for another 10 and see how they're doing. You want them to be browned and obviously a little bit more firm, so you're just gonna have to test. It's gonna be trial and error depending on your oven, so let's do it. So it turns out it only took about 15 minutes for these to be the perfect consistency of dryness and meatballiness in the oven at 350. So I will also say you will want to bump up your flour consistency quite a bit if you're finding that your dough is very wet. So we ended up adding maybe a half, maybe even three quarters cups of chickpea flour. Yum. Now the red sauce. This is make or break when it comes to Italian food, and I find that simpler is better. I've been trying to make good red sauce since college. Like seriously, I used to eat like pasta and red sauce every single day, just out of a can, like whatever, the cheapest stuff possible. And now I feel like I've really mastered a good, good recipe. So I'm gonna use about two large or like the equivalent of two cans of diced tomatoes, one good sweet yellow onion, three or four cloves of garlic, a tablespoon or so of oregano, a tablespoon of basil, salt, pepper, and then a little bit of either tomato paste or tomato puree, depending on how much sauce you wanna make. So if you want it really thick and chunky, but not very much sauce, then you can just do the tomatoes and maybe a little tomato paste. But again, if you're making a bunch of sauce, you're gonna to wanna to add a puree in there and make it a little bit more soupy. It's gonna last longer, go farther, and yeah, definitely recommend that. Instead of sauteing in oil, you know we like to use either water or vegetable broth, so highly recommend that. I'm gonna add all of these to the Dutch oven, saute and cook these up and let these simmer for a good long half hour, maybe even an hour while we prepare the rest of this because the longer the better. So the vegan Parmesan is by far the easiest vegan hack you will ever encounter and it is so worth it because it's incredibly delicious. So we're gonna just do all of these ingredients to taste. We're gonna use cashews, nutritional yeast, salt, and a little bit of garlic powder. Put them in the blender, pulse until you've got that nice granular Parmesan consistency and it goes great on top of any type of pasta, salad, soup, you name it, you guys are gonna love it. Here we are, date night, two kids, homemade pasta, questions about love, let's get into it. <laughs> okay, so I asked on my Instagram stories for you guys to ask us your favorite relationship questions that you're just dying to know about us. Right. <laughs> First question is actually one of the most common we get, and that is, how did you meet? Yep, high school. Yep, so it started out that you were actually dating my doubles partner from tennis. I played yep. tennis in high school. Yep. And we all ran around with each other on the weekends. I remember cruising in the back of your Mustang convertible, listening to super loud music, <laughs> yep. loving the subs. And I actually <laughs> wanted subs, subs in my car. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and the perk was he came over and installed it in my driveway yep. as I was swooning with cartoon heart eyes. I don't even <laughs> think I did it right. I think you still, your parents still had to pay to have it <laughs> professionally probably. like redone because I like screwed her stereo up. But that's how we like first kind of got to know each other. But really, we got to know each other in college. Things changed about, man, probably like six years later, we bonked back into each other and became best friends. That was like 12 years ago. It's hard to believe though, looking back at those high school days that we are here sitting next to each other I know. with kids. Come here, Max. Come <laughs> get in. Come here. Another question we get is, how did you know he or she was the one? Yeah. And I think it's just because we honestly were each other's best friends. Like, yeah. We had so much in common, or even if we introduced each other to our own hobbies or passions, we immediately like connected over them and they we took them on as our own. Like 
yeah. do you, I think, of cycling and me wanting a road bike because of you. We've had everything in common. Concerts you know. like Blink-182 oh and our gosh. obsession with friends and all things Punk 90s. Punk rock, <laughs> like all these crazy things that we've probably kind of outgrown but are still, are still in here. There was a point for me when I had moved back, we were still in college, but I was like tired of partying, decided to move home. And so we were at home in my mom's garage, building bikes and painting bikes. And I was just being a crazy like hobby guy. And Aaron was just patiently, quietly sitting there reading a magazine for hours. And my mom noticed it and she told me, she was like, Dusty, you guys have something really special. Not a lot of women are gonna just sit there and watch you work for hours on end. And I'm like, yep, that's true. That's very, very true. And then it came to like dating and going out to eat. And I introduced Dusty to his first Indian meal, <laughs> after which he was sweating from his nose oh profusely gosh. from the spice level. I was like Ben Stiller on Along Came Polly, yeah. like so hot and sweaty. Like, what is this food? <laughs> and now I'm addicted. Like, of course, I cannot it's go all we without. Make. Yeah, Thai, Indian, it's all my favorite, thanks to this beauty here. Question number three is now that we have kids, yeah. how do you guys keep the flame alive, slash, how do you make time for each other with not one, but two kiddos? Yeah, well, um, short nap time. Yeah, I was gonna say it's just two words yeah. nap time. <laughs> yeah, that's about the only time that we get for each other. Mm -hmm. um, but we do good, like even today, even shooting videos and again, cooking meals and stuff like that together. Um, even though it's kind of work, we try to make it fun. So. Yeah, and we do date nights. We're lucky to have both sets of parents here yep. in town. So every once in a while we'll drop them off and we get to go have a quiet dinner at one of our favorite restaurants. And yep. you're not so sweaty at the Indian ones anymore. No, my my <laughs> uh, temp, my spice tolerance has gone up. So we have yep. one really, really solid babysitter, family friend, yep. and she is absolutely amazing. Max talks about her nonstop totally. and somehow she works her magic and always brings him home asleep. slumped over her shoulder asleep so yep. we really like it and it's it's great just to get a couple hours of you know solid work time or peace and quiet yeah just a couple times a week and it's great mm -hmm. next question is do you guys fight and do you <laughs> argue or do you discuss oh my gosh <laughs> so there's this old Italian ice cream commercial that I always think about because yes we fight <laughs> Yes, we get very loud sometimes. And then like in this commercial, they are fighting and screaming at each other. And then they like totally make up over this amazing like bowl of ice cream. And I think we love hard, but we sometimes also argue hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like how you said it. You said it best when I was like, you're just so loud. And you're like, I'm not loud, I'm passionate. Yeah. So I would say our arguments are passionate. We both have so much <laughs> oomph behind our you know, our point of view, but right. at the end of the day, we almost have never gone to sleep mad at each other, nope. thankfully. We always resolve it, but... Yeah. Sometimes it takes right. a lot of time to talk it out and sort it out. My thing is, we've got to get it figured out. I feel like you sometimes want to like, no, nope, let's just leave it and come back to it, and I'm like, no, nope, we've got to get this figured out. <laughs> so we differ on that, but Overall, we, uh, we've been married for, what, eight years now? Mm -hmm. So we're doing pretty good. So last and final question. We had a hard time putting a stop to this, but we don't <laughs> want to go too long. But if you guys want more questions answered, leave yeah. them in the comments below. So our last one is going to be very on brand. So <laughs> dietary differences slash who went vegan first and how did the other respond? Yeah, so we get this question a lot. I feel like a lot of people look at us and think, oh my gosh, you guys are perfect. You like the same foods, you like the same music, you like the same clothes, like everything. But we have grown together because we got together in our early 20s. It's been easier for us to kind of like grow together. But I will say, I'll give you credit for like the dietary, especially vegan thing. Um, we we kind of went vegan together, but I but Aaron definitely gets the credit for wanting to go vegan and at least explore that. Mm -hmm. I think that the the entry point for me was just feeling so cruddy, which we've talked about in our vegan story transformation. We'll link that video below, but yep. it really you know 
pushed me to seek outside the box, outside of traditional Western medicine, and to get on Google, <laughs> yeah. which went from being my worst enemy to my best friend. We found a lot of cool doctors, and then a lot of cool influencers and yeah. other YouTubers, and the rest is history. Totally. It didn't happen overnight, I will say that, but we were both very open to experimentation, and we already liked to cook and have fun together in the kitchen, so Totally. We've always out. been cooking, so it just makes sense that we started the channel, and now we're doing this with you guys. We got Baby Liv sleeping like an angel on one side, you guys can't see, and Max on the other side, so this is one of those lucky moments where everything is peaceful. <laughs> yeah, peaceful. We are about to finally dig in. Our food is probably cold, but it's going to be delicious anyway. We're used to eating cold not very pretty food so this is going to be a treat all right you guys so if you enjoyed this delicious artisanal video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more recipe videos like it let us know in the comments below what you'd like to see next make sure you're subscribed to the eat move rest fam and click that bell to turn on your notifications and as always follow us daily on instagram at aaron sanzik and at db sanzik for more awesome recipes you can download our ebook there are so many amazing kid friendly and whole family friendly recipes until next time, eat, move, rest, your best. Bye, guys. Bye, bye guys. <laughs> Come here, Max. Come say bye to the camera. You want to say bye? Come say bye, guys. There are three things we all do every day, and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.